Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, which is titled Building, an OMB, Building on OMB's Guidance to Evolve CX at Your Agency. My name is Janine Ray, and I'm a senior leader in Deloitte's 140-person strong customer strategy and applied design practice, as well as a longtime member of act IX CX community of interest. I'll be moderating today's panel. This webinar is being sponsored by ACT I ACT, which is a premier public-private partnership established to improve government through the effective and innovative application of technology. ACT I ACT's customer experience community of interest was established to galvanize a community of government and industry leaders who are involved with improving citizen experience across the federal landscape. The topics we cover include things like driving customer-centered culture, training and professional development, and tools and best practices used to manage customer experience. In the case of today's webinar, we'll be making a deep dive on CX measurement. If you're interested in joining our community of interest, go to the actiact.org website and search for CX community of interest. Here you'll find instructions to join as well as links to other upcoming events. And speaking of upcoming events, I want to also let you know that our CX sum, about our CX Summit 2019, which will take place on Tuesday, June 25th from 7.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at the Grand Hyatt Hotel downtown. These are always fantastic events that I can highly recommend. The theme for this year's event is Customer Experience, a Unifying Vision for IT Modernization. We want to thank ACT IACT as well as Deloitte for sponsoring this event. Uh, we'd also like to thank our panelists as well as all of you for taking the time to tune in. Next, I'm going to do a quick introduction of our panel, and then we're going to dive into some introductory materials background. Okay, first, we, yes. um, first we have Amira Bolin. Uh, Amira is currently on detail at the Office of Management and Budget to support the implementation of the Customer Experience Cross-Agency Priority Goal and A11 Section 280 on managing federal customer experience. In her home agency role, which is GSA, she serves as the Deputy Director of the Office of Evaluation Sciences, an interdisciplinary team of experts that translates and tests evidence-based insights into concrete recommendations for how to improve government. Next, we have um, Michelle Cartagena. As Director of Customer Experience at the Transportation Security Administration, Michelle is responsible for facilitating its customer service initiatives and has just embarked on a fairly large measurement undertaking, from what we understand. In addition, under Michelle's leadership, the TSA Contact Center operates as the main portal for inquiries from the traveling public, addressing more than one million passenger contacts per year. And as you know, we were expecting Anil Tilby, Director of Enterprise Measurement and Design from the VA to join, but unfortunately he's under the weather today. So, However, the VA sent us another one of its all-stars, Lee Becker. Lee Becker currently serves as the Chief of Staff at the Department of Veterans Affairs Veterans Experience Office. The VEO's mission is to enable the Department of Veterans Affairs to improve the customer experience for all veterans, families, caregivers, and survivors. Prior to this role, Lee served as a division chief at the Board of Veterans Appeals, where he provided leadership and development of VA appeals modernization efforts to help reduce the backlog of veterans' appeals. And Josh Knight, my colleague, Josh leads strategic management of our overall VOC program for Deloitte's customer strategy and applied design practice, providing insights and customer strategies at the enterprise level across, across mission areas. Before I turn it over to Mira, I thought it might be useful to look at the history of CX initiatives in the federal government. You can see that up until about 2015, we had many piecemeal initiatives, primarily focused on how to make government more digital. In the last couple of years, we've seen a different theme emerge, which is trying to encourage agencies to think more holistically about the management of customer experience, IT modernization, measurement, best practices, management of customer experience, digital, mobile, those kinds of things. As more of best practices from industry have been codified, these ideas are making their way into government in a big way, culminating in these big initiatives in 2018. So as someone who spent most of her career in industry serving large service organizations, I can't tell you how great this is to see. Four or five years ago, people, few people uttered um, the word customer experience, and now it seems to be top of mind for many agencies. 
With this, we're going to turn to Amira to help us understand more about the OMB guidance and what it all means in how agencies need to be thinking and acting about customer experience in the future. Then Josh is going to give us some thoughts about methods and tools to support your efforts. Amira? Great. Thanks for having me, and afternoon, everybody. Um, so hopefully those of you on the phone who are in government and I guess and outside of government as well are feeling this new energy around customer experience. Um, and so that's really been driven by this administration created, um, d decided that creating a customer experience that compares to or exceeds that of leading private sector organizations is one of the three primary goals of the president's management agenda. So as many of you probably know, federal, um, the federal government is the lowest ranked industry for customer experience on several indices. Not only are we nine points on average behind um, the private sector, but we're even behind local and state government as well. And, um, you know, so we're excited that now there's this focus on customer experience because in the past, and as Janine walked through in the history of, there's been a lot that's, that's happened in this space, but um, the last customer-focused goal was on customer service, and now we've evolved to really looking at customer experience and thinking more about the lifetime of interactions that individuals have with our federal government. And so we care about this, obviously, because we know that increased customer experience uh, leads to increased customer satisfaction, which is also causally linked to increased trust in government. And trust in government is really the outcome that we care about because we know that um, when people trust the government, there's an increased tendency to follow the law, comply with regulations, and then many of our programs and policies success is dependent on human behavior and people, you know, knowing that they can show up to um, in, in a disaster, that the, that the federal programs will be there to serve them, that if they take out a farm loan, there's services that go along with that to help make their farm more successful and, and all the other things that our government does. So um, the actions related to the president's management agenda is the establishment of a cross-agency priority goal on customer experience, and the CAP goal um, provides provided an overall action plan for improving CX across government. And two of the strategies that um, are part of the four that are supporting that are um, really directly related to federal agencies themselves and, and A11, which we'll get to in a second. But that, the first one is increasing transparency to drive accountability by embedding standardized customer experience metrics with high impact programs to create government-wide performance dashboards. And the third strategy was applying proven practices to raise the standard of service of high impact service providers and um, OMB would develop resources, capabilities, and tools proven to enhance uh, the performance of high impact programs. And so that leads us to our um, bit of an unsexy bureaucratic move, but that's the, the annual update to the A OMB Circular A11 last summer um, at the end of June was the inclusion of a brand new section on improving the customer experience. And that new section aligned with the PMA using principles and practices proven by leading private sector organizations and is our first step toward a more broad federal CX improvement effort. So the purpose of this guidance, um, Deloitte has this great graphic here that kind of outlines what we're trying to achieve, but really it's establishing a CX mindful culture across federal government services, improving customer satisfaction by actually measurably improving those scores that we talked about establishing, providing structure and consistency around how agencies and programs approach CX. As you can imagine, there are as many definitions of what good CX looks like as there are agencies of government, and so really we tried to um, design something that would just provide a baseline for everyone to be working from, identify program accountability and governance mechanisms, ensure that the high impact programs are making progress and growing CX program maturity and applying best practices, um, ensuring that those high impact programs are receiving and acting on customer feedback, um, and then allowing for government-wide uh, comparative assessment of customer satisfaction while ensuring transparency through public reporting. So it does a number of really key new things. One of those is asking all of our agencies that are high impact service providers to complete a self-assessment that was um, designed along a, a CX maturity model, um, start to begin to report quarterly their CX data, and then use those what they learn from both their self-assessment and comparing themselves to and looking at their own practices and how those align with best practices to and collecting customer feedback data to create action plans annually in alignment with their strategic planning efforts, their budgeting efforts, um, and their general performance management. 
So um, just a note on the high impact service providers because we often get asked who are they and why did they get picked. Um, it's, it's a bit of a legacy list from the core federal services council for those of you that remember that. Um, and it's been really cool to see how in this this most recent iteration, different entities have defined them. Um, it's the first round because this was a bit of a warm up year with this new guidance. Um, we left it to the agencies to define how they wanted to scope who within that high designated high impact service provider was responsible. So you have everything from the Social Security Administration that is holding themselves accountable at the administration level to um, the Department of Interior, National Wildlife. Uh, or Fish and Wildlife Services selected the National Wildlife Refuge System to uh, Customs and Border Protection has identified a specific call center that aligns with a number of visa programs. So it's, it's very different this first year and that's fine. Um, we're, we're also learning as we go um, as we implement this guidance and always open to feedback on how you think the A11 guidance could be made stronger. So if you're an agency on the phone and, and have an idea, please let us know. Um, and I'll just give a quick update on where we're at with that. So on slide five, um, one of the things that we heard when we were reviewing with every agency about their, um, their implementation of this guidance was that PRA could potentially be a blocker to their <laughs> surveying. And so we have two tracks available to agencies. Um, and so if you have more questions about this, please please reach out. Um, and there's also a contact info, information for a woman at GSA who's leading the kind of uh, liaison with all, all high impact service providers or others that are interested in using um, a GSA developed free of cost survey tool um, that is also includes a centrally managed PRA clearance to help you navigate that. So please reach out to us if you feel like PRA is a barrier because it absolutely should not be and there's, there's certainly ways to, to work with it. And then just a quick highlight of some up important dates for high impact service providers or those supporting them. Um, the next month, we're really trying to lock in how agencies are thinking about their CX data. So that includes operational data, like using the digital analytics program, as well as, um, as I mentioned earlier, working with GSA to determine whether or not you're going to be in this first round of users for the touchpoint tool, which is a survey tool. And finally, the action plans for all of our high impact service providers are due on June 30th. So I know. Um, folks are hustling on that. Um, and if you're someone that's not in government but interested, please stay tuned because those action plans will be made public um, over the summer. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Samira. That's a lot of that's a lot for sure. We look forward to talking more about that when we get to the panel. Josh. Perfect. Thank you, Janine. Um, again, and thanks for my intro earlier. I, uh, uh, a big title, really. I work in uh, CX measurement <laughs> and transformation. I've been at this with uh, government for about uh, eight or nine years, focused on customer work. Um, and so really excited about all the energy that OMB has put into this and, and also kind of the opportunities that it creates for our, our clients to kind of do what they want to do, which is unlock customer experience for their agency. It really puts some oomph behind it uh, for those that are already passionate about it. So I wanted to talk quickly about kind of CX measurement as a methodology. We have this graphic, which is I know a lot to kind of absorb on the screen. Um, but before I go into that, I just wanted to tell you kind of an anecdote about um, why I think this is important. I was sitting in a CX uh, transformation kickoff meeting for one of my clients and, um, and they had the COO, CFO, kind of the leaders of the organization as well as the frontline managers uh, all there to talk about what would be the priorities for the next uh, for the next year as as CX had become a top priority for the organization, and uh, the plan was to kind of review a list of options for things to, to to prioritize, and it became clear very quickly that that wasn't going to work because the CFO and the COO said we're not going to make any decisions about priorities without data, right? And as you all start to think about and absorb kind of how you're going to chart the path for CX going forward. Um, I want you all to kind of think about that anecdote and think about how are you going to structure a way, if you're going to change the organizations that you, uh, that you serve and you hope to, hope to impact, um, how can you help your, uh, your executives really, really navigate those types of decisions. So 
Um, you know, to do that, to do it well, it's important to think about doing it really comprehensively. I've been in places where I've uh, seen, you know, a bunch of different surveys that measure different types of things and different structures and different ways, and there's no way to integrate it. So a thought for what that architecture looks like and how to how to bring it all together is really critical. And then a, and a thought for how to um, make sure that it's, um, that it's about learning and it's not being too, too punitive. So this graphic really just, as you're thinking about it, you've got to think about who you serve, where you measure. It can be employees, it can be uh, customers, it can be your business partners, and then um, how can you integrate customer uh, feedback and employee feedback and operational data to get the right insights. If you don't have the key operational data, you won't know what to fix associated with the feedback that you're getting. I know what you measure, uh, the OMB team did a great job of kind of highlighting there's different types of measurements with surveys. You can be measuring a transaction that you had with a call center or retail. You can be measuring the whole journey, journey for signing up for and receiving some benefit. You can be measuring the relationship with an agency over a long period of time. Uh, so just understanding that there are apples and oranges in that kind of uh, type of measurements and <coughs> deciding kind of what you're measuring is really important. And then the most important piece is how you act, right? Like what are the things that you're going to do with the data that's coming in? And have you found ways to respond to customer issues in real time so that you can follow up with them one quick example is, you know, we, we turned on a measurement program with a client. They found the word broken in some of the feedback for their websites, and we're immediately able to fix broken links, right, in their website that they didn't really know were there before. Um, and so being able to kind of respond in real time, another one, you know, the person said that they weren't able to get the service um, because of some sort of error. Um, they had paid for it, and then uh, we were able to kind of follow up that person directly. Um, that could be... Um, really powerful. And then the other feedback loop is how do you improve programs and processes at scale? Um, so so the, those are kind of the frames for where, where we think about it. The why is driven out of industry. You know, uh, uh, major industries want to improve customer experience because they know the more satisfied, more loyal customers spend more. Um, they cost less to serve, and when people spend more and you cost less to serve, then it's more profitable. So, uh, so that's the line. And I think beyond a little bit, this is my point of view, beyond kind of what Amira said, I think that this is kind of the headlights for success for government in a lot of ways. But the way to see forward whether or not our programs are having the, the most impact is, is going to be reflective of how satisfied I think citizens are with it. So. Um, so that's just a little framework about that. A little bit about the tools that are at your disposal. Um, industry has gotten really far ahead around CX technology, and, um, and we try to be really careful to pick the right tool for the right client at the right time. Um, but, but there are some leaders in the market that you certainly would want to be familiar with. Um, some of the key things that you want to be able to make sure you're doing is how do you in integrate operational data into feedback? Um, a really quick anecdote about why that's important, you know, wait times in line or uh, generally wait times for any kind of service, you could manage those down to, let's say, for a call center, one minute uh, for, a, you know, for an application one day, whatever it is, manage it down to the most small um, amount of time. But it might not have any impact on sentiment, right? It could be five minutes or five days that is where people really start to drop off. But if you haven't integrated sentiment data with the operational data, you'll never know where those cutoff points for your service level. Um, that's just one example. There's tons of others. It makes it easy for you to find the right points uh, to fix if you've integrated with operational data. The other two I want to really, really quickly hit um, is role-based reporting. We want to be able to get data to the people who can do things about the issues and quickly get, like allow them to do it. We don't want customer experience measurement to be about somebody doing analytics in some high castle and then sending it back down to different program offices or whatever it is. So certainly want to empower role-based feedback about whatever it is. We don't want um, the, the high-impact service programs being some central clearinghouse for all the data. And the last piece is text analytics. You know, there's a lot of surveys out there that are 50, 60 questions long sitting out on government websites right now, which is crazy to me. Uh, and you can really just take all of that noise out. If you have really strong text analytics, you can ask somebody, how satisfied are they? Leave an open inbox right after that. And then, frankly, you know, don't ask many more questions after that. Uh, you, you should definitely ask them here as questions, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want her to see it. Um, anyway, so that's my quick summary. Um, a lot to know. And this is certainly as you're going from, you know, 
Michelle, you know, you're at square one, right? But as you're as you're measuring towards the long term agency program, kind of think about the big architecture, um, and you'll avoid some pitfalls that I've seen uh, past. All right, thanks, Jimmy. Great, Josh, this is great stuff. Um, okay, so we're thrilled to drive in, dive into our star-studded panel here. Um, but before we start, um, if you're logged into the WebEx online, please look for the Q&A chat box on the bottom right of your screen, and feel free to send us your questions, and we'll try to take a few before the end of our Q&A. So, great. Let's jump in and start with a couple of introductory questions for our for our panel, um, really directed towards uh, Michelle and Lee. If you could just tell us a little bit about your role and how this relates to customer experience, and uh, what excites you about what what you're seeing as a result, Michelle? Sure, I'll start. Um, thanks again for having me. This is really a pleasure, and I'm so excited about CX overall, especially at agency at TSA. Um, everybody's very familiar with the organization, and so um, areas of improvement are definitely on our focus. Uh, as Janine had mentioned in the intro, um, I manage the customer service branch. And the branch initially started out as a contact center branch, only focusing on how we interact with people through a call center, through emails. Um, but we quickly realized that uh, CX is not about a contact center experience solely, but also um, branches out into the overall customer experience. So um, that's the role of the, the customer service branch now at TSA is one side is facilitating the customer experience across the agency, and the other side um, helps to manage our contact center. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me. This is Lee. Um, and, you know, my, my role essentially is really at one of the best jobs in the world is because I work with some of the most amazing people that are um, really just focused on really improving the experience for um, service members, our veterans, families, caregivers, survivors. And just inherent in that statement, you know, the fact that I'm not only just saying veterans, but I'm saying family, families, caregivers, survivors, and service members, it's, it's that orientation that has been exciting to see is how we understanding our customers. So when we're talking about the veteran, it's not just the veteran, it's that ecosystem and how we think about it. So we have an amazing team that is uh, focused in on uh, really maturing the data uh, vertical, the tools that's needed to actually apply the data to for our employees across all the uh, the healthcare side, the benefit side, the moral affairs, to make sure that um, we're providing the best experience. And the technology, uh, whether it is VA.gov, and if you haven't been in VA.gov lately, I suggest you go. Um, you'll see it's a one-stop shop, and, and really it's not uh, about the VA, it's about what veterans and their families, caregivers, survivors, and how they can interact with VA. And so that orientation really from inside out to outside in is really um, uh, displayed there. And of course, our call, all the call center, uh, the contact center modernization um, efforts, and then finally engagement, um, which is at the end of the day, it's not us in DC that can fix the local problems, right? And we can't take a screwdriver from DC to fix something in North Dakota. But working with the communities and developing those those uh, relationships in the communities to really truly understand what those issues are at the local level and being able to um, as a as a uh, agency be able to help and empower those communities to help fix those problems. So excited to be with uh, this amazing panel. That's great. Um, okay, so you know we we, um, we there was a lot going on before um, A11 280 arrived, um, but uh, we know it came and it was very influential. So I want to ask. Um, Amira, how has it really been received by your high-impact service providers? What kind of interest have you had? What how have you been interacting with them? And 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 uh, how do you think they're doing uh, in, the, in acting on the guidance? Well, I think it's good because Lee and Michelle can keep me honest. <laughs> <laughs> they are high-impact service providers that have received this guidance. I think that the coolest thing for me to see was that how um, when so over December we and part of. January, February, um, we met with each of the high impact service providers and did a deep dive of their self-assessment. And I think the coolest thing was that in most of those conversations, 
folks were just excited that they now had a vehicle to attach the work that they've always wanted to do to, or like a reason and justification for why they need to be talking to their customers, or why they need to be journey map doing journey mapping, or why they should be pausing before they procure a system. Um, and so I think that was really encouraging that it was, and, and hopefully for the, our purpose was basically just providing um, a framework for, for folks to be able to lift up the work that they already want to do and help them get some top cover support. So I think in most instances it's, it's been that way and um, I've been surprised by, I think, if you're in government, you know that OMB often asks you to do a lot of things. <laughs> and um, we've actually had quite, we haven't really had to chase that many high impact service providers. Everyone's been really good about, you know, doing what doing what we've outlined and um, and are, are excited about it and giving us good feedback on how to how to update it in the future too. That's um, that's great. So um, diving into to uh, the two that are sitting uh, sitting with us, we we know you probably were thinking about this before uh, the guides came. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about how things stood before it came and then what happened? Um, afterwards, because I think it, it was a lot more directive than maybe um, maybe many organizations had um, uh, thought out before, and uh, so anxious to hear. Sure. Um, so as mentioned, we used to be the TCC branch or TSA Contact Center branch, and um, our branch name changed to the Customer Service Branch. Um, now. We're using customer experience um, to talk about that full journey or that relationship overall as opposed to just that one time transaction. But um, there were these little pockets of, of CX across government. Um, you know, Martha, that's how I met Martha, was uh, with the GC3 <laughs> way back when um, and trying to improve contact centers. And um, we were involved in the community of practices, supporting the OMB cross-agency priority goals. But um, I know OMB, OMB tried at first, you know, let's not be so heavy-handed, but by getting this specific guidance, as you said, it really helped push things along, um, really helped provide specific guidance Although we were moving in that direction, I understand that there's agencies that are sort of like, I have no idea where to start. And so kind of laying out this map that really helped them get started on their journey. So I think that was was great for us to, you know, get that top cover, as you mentioned, and, and push us on our way. Yeah, great. Elite. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because we, you know, we started the journey on experience, I would say, really kind of focusing on experience. Mm -hmm. It was really when, when uh, we had a burning platform, and the burning platform was Phoenix. When Phoenix VA, we, um, we were blindsided by, because um, we did not hear, we didn't have a mechanism to hear from our customers. And so we were very focused in on operations data, of, uh, and, and frankly, the lists looked like everything was fine. But our customers were saying different, our veterans were saying different, our employees were saying different, but we didn't have those mechanisms to really pull it in into, and it kind of gets to the point about when you have just operations and financial metrics and you don't have the customer metrics in, you, um, you miss that. So we had that burning platform to start um, the conversation. The problem is though, and I think this is, well, not problem, the excitement, the exciting piece is that the burning platform was primarily on the healthcare side. So we did a lot of great work and we had a great, you know, we had leadership that came in and said, okay, this is something we want to do, but the focus, again, was on the healthcare side. And so what this, um, what the A11 does for us is also has, says to us, you know, it's not just the healthcare piece, right? It's the it's those other aspects. And, um, and so let's not wait for another burning platform to start thinking about experience and think about the importance of experience, um, because guess what? Experience is here to stay. Mm -hmm. It's here to stay, and you can see it's very that um, the administration is very serious about it. We have clear um, uh, the A11 is pretty clear about what's expect, expected, and so that that provides us. We're very excited about that because that enables us to really uh, create this uh, demand of why that's needed. If you know, if that's unfortunately the reality is that's what's needed in government to have those clear policies, the direction um, to be able to compete with other. Uh, committee commitments that we have. 
Yeah, I think, you know, the way it's laid out also is so great because it codifies all these ideas that otherwise might be swirling around and it's all in one place so that somebody that's never experienced, doesn't understand customer experience very well, what's the purpose of customer experience, how are we going to go about this and, and so forth. So that's a really a great point about it being, uh, being all codified, people can understand it and you've got direction whereas you could go in a lot of different directions otherwise if you didn't have, uh, uh, have that. So, you know, both of you have different agencies, we have a sprawling agency, enormous with so many people and so many customers to serve. So I just want to start, and Michelle, I'll ask you the same question too. When you have something of that magnitude, you know, what's the approach? How did you think about that from, you know, like day one, what are we going to do? You know, day 500, what, what should we be doing? You know, it, it's, I'm sure it's been a journey. It has. Um, I, I could start. And it's interesting that you know, when we first started this journey, I think we want we wanted to tackle everything. Like we were on this kind of, we were saying, you know what, we're going to do 13 service lines, <laughs> and we're going to journey it out. We're going to measure those 13 service lines, and finally, what we realized is, and it's kind of I got to give credit to um, our deputy of our office, Barbara Barbara Morton, who she always talks about is when you have a, you have a loaf of bread and you have. Um, you know, one, one slice of butter, you know, spraying out that piece of butter across a loaf of bread, it's not very tasty. So can we get a couple of slices, you know, find those couple of slices where we can get really some really tasty bread with that butter. So <laughs> I, I, and that's what we did. We found those slices and those slices really it started with um, the outpatient experience. The burning platform that we had was that the appointments, it was an issue with appointments. So what we did was we said, you know what, we want to understand that experience from, from start to finish even the pre-appointment all the way through uh, the experience with the provider and then post post the provider with laboratories and radiology, the entire outpatient experience. And and that was also something, another, it was strategic in the sense that that was also um, one of our largest uh, service lines when you think about patient. All our, you know, we have we're 150 medical centers, you know, 800 clinics, medical, um, you know, clinics across the country. So it's, a, it's a really a massive outpatient op operation. And so by measuring that experience, understanding the moments that matter, and being able to then measure, use the, the a framework of the, of the A11 to be able to measure in the moments that matter, and then bring in the operational data as well, we start understanding what that is. And then taking that data and being able to really inform the strategy, the programmatics, the operations, and tactics, and be able to rewire the, in the, into the process. Now we had a use case where we could show the agency, look, this is really working. And, and so we put the other parts on pause, and now with that use case, now there's a hunger of, okay, now we want to see more of this. So we started um, you know, ramping up the other, the other lines, of, uh, uh, lines of action. And so I would say is, you know, it's tough because when we have a, you know, you have a, a lot of demands and it's like, well, we want to see action, we want to see results. It's, it's finding those, those opportunities in, um, you know, those, those slices of bread that really shows that impact to leadership and then be able to prove that concept and then use that as a way to um, gain momentum and build more momentum. And you are forging your way. So now you know what to expect the next time you go to something like that. That's a super big a thing to tackle. Absolutely. In that whole scenario, what do you think were your biggest challenges? There must have been many. Right. I mean, it's, you know, so the VA and, and typically most agencies are really consensus-based, right? It's a consensus-based organization. So how do you, how do you actually, and it's, a lot of it is stakeholder engagement and being able to work with it. It's, it wasn't us coming with a, a hammer and saying, hey, you will do this because we're from the Secretary's office and we're here to help you. No, that's not how the, pro the approach was. We really used this, and i, I got to give credit to you know, Anahito, who's the, the, you know, the CXO for GSA. She kind of says, you know, change therapy. Right, using this as a way to to really help with um, bringing the employees in, and they were part of the success. Yeah. And frankly, they wanted to do this. They wanted. They just did not have necessarily a mechanism how to do this. And this, we just provided this vehicle to do that and to allow it to allow it to happen. Another thing is really getting our leaders on board and really being able to keep make sure because leadership is a key aspect with being able to really drive this and giving, giving, empowering our leaders to be able to use this, this approach, this methodology, in being able to um, show, this, show the success. And, um, and, and so I would, say, I would say it's the stakeholder engagement, leadership, finding those champions, building the coalition, and using that to drive um, this effort. That's beautiful. I remember um, 
I think it was Sarah Brooks told me that uh, it was Bob McDonald was the first, you know, first secretary ever to take a journey map to Capitol Hill with him, which was a really brave thing, and I would have loved to have hear, heard what that conversation was. But that's a that's a great uh, great summary. And and Michelle, your agency is different, mm -hmm. different mission and so forth. How, what was your approach in in, in in doing these things, and what kind of challenges? You're probably still, you know, we're still encountering the yeah. challenges. <laughs> we're still cha being challenged. Um, well. As we mentioned, um, I think VA really set a great model for other agencies because you guys were so far ahead. And so um, we had already started efforts, for example, for data collection. We knew what needed to be done, but it was just more how do we do this. So let's use in-house resources. Let's sort of do the homegrown version of activity. So when A11 came around, we were like, wow, this is great. Now we have, you know, roadmap, we have a way to do this, we have, again, the top cover. Um, so it really gave us that backing and gave us the direction. Um, but on the other hand, um, there, was, there were challenges related to communication. And as you mentioned, where do we start? We wanted to do everything because, you know, you have the champions, especially folks on my team that are like, Wow, this is fantastic. Okay, let's fix it all. And um, and when you try to bite off too much, um, you're not going to be successful. And so with our first attempt with, um, well, we had a council. With our first attempt, um, we started out, came out strong, but we just bit off too much, um, too much to, to make progress. So we, we learned lessons there. Um, and now we got a chance to reset and take a pick, you know, take a look at, where are we, where do we want to be, and how are we going to get there? Um, and so we're still mapping that out as to how, how we get there. I mean, we're great. We have a great opportunity partnering with Deloitte, for example, to um, assist with our data collection and use expertise to say, hey, here's what our clients have been working on using VA um, as a model and other agencies that are further along to just help us guide our efforts. That's great. And Amira, I wanted to ask you too, what are you seeing with the other agencies? I know you've been out with them uh, many. Is this one of the, you know, sort of where do I start and, you know, how do I get to or you find yourself being the, you know, the federal therapist where you have to yes. <laughs> get people um, uh, thinking in a different way or, or getting them to, 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 you know, not have inertia about this? <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of the conversation started out as therapy. Um, <laughs> But, no, I think that, like, Tim and Michelle made a point earlier around, you know, there's some agencies that are just starting, and then there's agencies like hers that have a branch named after this, and then there's agencies like Lee's that have a 100-person office dedicated to this. And so we joked that, like, it just looked like polka dots when we mapped out the, everyone's maturity, um, because you have you have entities that have had no staffing, no resources to even, you know, they're struggling to do their basic functions and or have a population that um, doesn't have broadband access or good cell phone service. And so they like laughed when you asked know, them about doing a survey. So I think that, um, you know, it, it runs the gamut and, um, but, but again, it just goes back to like this, it just, there's so many civil servants that are connected to their mission and they just, this resonates with them so much. And so they're excited about the hope of, of again, getting more support from this. Great. Um, Josh shared earlier about how CX measurement starts with the people that you serve and where you measure um, and culminates in taking action based on their feedback. Um, the journey to getting to all those cylinders to fire isn't something that just happens overnight. Can you just talk a little bit about how um, the, um, and, and, and for Lee Michelle particularly, how this has, um, uh, how, how, what kind of goals that you had to begin with and how you sort of brought the organization along or bringing the organization along. I think you can't do it by yourself, obviously, and you pointed out how everybody's got to be involved to a certain extent. Absolutely. That, that stakeholder engagement that, that we spoke of is, is so important. Um, you know, if you were an octopus with tentacles all over, then you could touch all these points, but because we're not, um, it's important to really get the stakeholders engaged, have an understanding of what we're trying to do. And, you know, we always talk about buy-in. Um, there is some selling to it, but we want them to get it, not just buy-in. We really want them to get it and understand the impact that um, 
taking these measures is going to have on their operation and ultimately the whole organization. Did you have specific goals that you had, like we're going to try to improve this or we're going to try to make this faster or we're going to, you know, did you yeah, have that? So all of the above. Yeah. But, you know, again, as I mentioned, the list was so long. It was like, we're going to improve our contact centers and everyone's going to love the screening experience and um, everyone who enrolls in pre-check is going to love everything. And, you know, the list was so incredibly long. So I actually loved the um, the subject categories that OMB um, had came up, come up with, with ease and confidence and trust, you know, all of those helped us put things in boxes and yeah. say, okay, looking at our operation, how, where do we stand in those areas and what needs improvement? Mm -hmm. and, and then you can prioritize like, okay, this is an area that we really need to focus on because there is no trust, there is no um, mm. ease in the process. Yeah, so. it's, these questions are really great. And I remember when, um, uh, Amira, I know you slaved uh, over, over them and it was very difficult to pull it together, but they seem very elegant in a way and uh, sort of really get to the heart of the, Part of the matter. How about you? How about you, Lee? In terms of the evolution and and uh, goals that you had, and how you're thinking about goals, and when you know you've accomplished the goal, then what do you do? You move on to another goal, or you know? Absolutely. Um, a great, great question. I think this is something where, for us, like you know, one of the things that we talk about applying when you think about CX, one of the biggest things, right, is it's about the customer, it's about the user, it's about your employees. So one of the things is for us is we want to do that on ourselves, right, and try to understand. You know, really, what is the what are the best practices out there? Um, that was something initially first on is what are the best practices in the industry, um, and also of course to our customers. So um, on, the, on, the, on the industry side, we talk to the best of the best: Starbucks, Marriott, uh, Amazon, USAA, um, which kind of aligned very nicely with us with VA because that was one of the oh, big, sure. right. And and so so we think of the best of experience. That's, those are the ones we talk to to find out exactly how do they approach it, how do they approach. It. That was one. Two is talking to our custom, actual customers and understanding the personas. So that was something that we really had to do, we we did early on. That was like our goal is to understand that. And so the macro journey map you mentioned yeah. that Sarah Brooks was involved with early on. That was a key key aspect of understanding the the journey from start to finish. And for us, it was very it was pretty um, revolutionary. And again, and a good aspect for change therapy because. <laughs> When you think of VA, you typically think VA as an org chart, and you have the healthcare vertical, you have the benefits vertical, you have the memorial vertical, and then you have your headquarters vertical, you know, your, right? But really what the journey map did for us, it actually flipped it, um, uh, out, it was sort of inside out, outside in. From the veteran perspective, what is a journey, and how does VA fit into their lives? So that was a key aspect, the key goal. The next was really finding those micro journeys. And then that was the key where I kind of mentioned is finding those slices of bread. Don't, you know, focus on the massive loaf. It's that the, the micro journey, and it will, it will come out of the pain points from the macro one. And then what we, one of the key aspects veterans, veterans said to us was, you know, VA is very complex. We want it to be very simple for us, you know, and how do we, how do we um, get to you? And so um, for us, you know, the, the evolution to VA.gov was very key how that, so you had the one single front door. Yeah. The evolution to VA311, you know, we had uh, 1,800 phone numbers. And yeah. being able to have that one phone keep number. Keep it simple, right? Keep it, keep it simple. So those were, and that's how we kind of, I would say, evolved. But in that process, and this is very key for uh, federal agencies, is to think about, because again, I've talked about a lot of best practices from industry, but how do you then translate it into government? And how do you be able to do that where you have now an organization with, inside the government that can operate within the structure? The last thing you want is to be a center of excellence, off to the side, kind of like, you know, special, oh, here's, here's the special people. No, we have to be, uh, the way I kind of see it, I say the biggest um, compliment is when people don't see me necessarily, see our organization as its own little thing, yeah. right? We are an enabler for the enterprise. And, and how do you do this? You, it is something you have to integrate in policy. You have to integrate in, you have to create a governance. Every agency has a governance structure. How do you bake in your CX insights into the governance, into decision making? Because you know there's operational financial decision making that's being happening every time, but how are you integrating those pieces? It, those are some of those goals that you have to have as a federal agency, as an agency with it an organization within a federal agency is you got to set those goals and how do you hardwire experience so that cause yeah you want it to be in the DNA of the organization, it has to be in the DNA of the organization for mm -hmm. longevity 
Yeah, and I, I think that's, you know, uh, that's a, a realization that many people are coming to now because they realize that they have to stand up these customer experience offices, that they're, that they're multifunctional, that people have to play from all the different functions, and, uh, and it's, it's not an easy thing to stand up anything, but, but certainly uh, uh, this is critical for being able to do it well. You can, you know, you could play around with something, dabble in something, do ha ad hoc operations, but if you don't have that overall um, structure, it's very difficult for all the things that you're talking about in terms of structure. So um, this, I want to sort of talk a little bit about tools for a minute and your cho choosing of tools. Do you think about the tools that you're using, the tools, the measurement tools and so forth? Do you think of, a, uh, as, is, a, is, it a, is it one thing that you do? Is it many things that you do? Do you have a portfolio of tools? How do you choose those tools? <laughs> sure. Um, so tools are very important, I think, and as you prioritize and figure out, again, what are those slices of bread uh, that you want to pick, you need to, those are the tools that people then will, their employees will, will it should make those, their jobs easier in how they apply it to improving the experience. So when we think of tools, we think of it in, in you know, as, as simple as maybe a, and I say it's simple, it's not that simple, but a welcome kit, for instance. A, a one-stop shop welcome kit where a veteran wants to understand all their services and benefits. They have this one-stop shop and how to mm. be able to navigate. And it's not a complex, very complex manual in, in how to address it. A tool could also be customer um, experience training, actual and very simple training, very simple. If we think about customer experience, it's the empathy piece, right? So how do you give, um, you know, how do you help their employees to, to bring out the empathy? A tool can be to as elaborate as a, a very um, sophisticated uh, measurement system, yeah. which is something something that we have, where it gives you the real-time insights. You know, it, it scrapes all our social media, scrapes all our um, or properties to be able to understand in real time what our um, the experience is. It could be Red Coat Ambassadors. Veterans told us it was, it was hard to navigate the medical center. So what we did is we have we implemented a tool where every medical center there's a consistent experience with a Red Coat that's going to help veterans to navigate. Just like you know, so we think about this. It could be a name tag. You know, very very simple. So those are, and that's something that Starbucks does. Marriott does. It's, they did a, yeah. they did a right. name tag. <laughs> that's right. And so those oh. are, those are um, so tools can be as, again, as simple. And that's a great description of what the be tools good. can be, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you picked up a lot. That's probably one of the reasons that so many people can come to you now, because you know all these lessons and you can, uh, you can uh, and relay them. And yeah. Michelle, what about you in terms of what you're thinking about? So um, I'll take passenger screening, for example, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people can go through the screening process if they understand the process. And so um, we have advisements that officers give individuals as they go through the screening checkpoint, but sometimes based on the atmosphere, it might be difficult to hear or understand. So one thing that um, we've explored is like digital signs. So when you're at the checkpoint, is there a way that we can communicate to people, you know, show them emptying their pockets mm -hmm. and putting things on a bin, giving that visual so that um, they're, they're, you know, they have lots of things on their mind. So you see it, and you're not waiting very long, hopefully. And so, you know, you see the image um, and can move on. Also looking at um, information that we provide on the website. So you ask somebody where you are on your journey. Are you getting ready to travel? Have you already traveled? Um, or are you in the midst of your travel? So um, you can direct information to them um, based on where they are and their journey that day. So those are some tools. I mean, there's there's also, as everybody knows, you know, customer feedback tools of of surveys. Um, but you think about TSA and the screening process that we don't collect information on people to to do an after uh, survey, like sending them an email. So when you do an in-person survey, um, you're able to get that immediate transactional information from them. Um, versus some other aspects, such as like a contact center where you want to ask them was the information the agent provided helpful, but asking them right after the call, they don't know because they haven't flown yet. So if you give them some time to actually fly, have their um, experience, then they may be able to give you better feedback on, yes, exactly what they told me is the way it happened. So, But you sort of have to get to them like more, pretty close after they've had the experience yes. as well, right? Yes. yes. Um, great. The, the, this is such a great um, uh, description of what a tool can be to foster customer experience, not just thinking about tech tools or, or things that you're doing kind of in your management, but rather how to enable your customers to be able to give themselves a better experience. 
So I'm looking at the time. I know that uh, we're running up against the time and we want to have some questions to go to in, in a few minutes, but I wanted to just ask one final thing, uh, and Amir, you can chime in on this too, um, and, and what you're seeing. But um, you know, now that you have measurement, how do you, um, how has this impacted your decision making? You know, because like you were saying, Lee, you know, you, you're, you're getting insights, you're learning things, and somehow that's the improvements thereof have to find themselves into a budget cycle and things like that. So I'd love to hear a little bit about that. Um, how's, it, how's it impacted decision making in your, because, you, you know, it's, it's not just the VOE office, right, you're dealing with. You've got the operations to consider, you've got financial to consider, et cetera. Absolutely, and that's something um, we are um, we're very excited about because I think to to us we think that is some of the most transformation that is where transformation happens because to kind of the point Josh made about data how data kind of drives it so for us as through governance we have the the customer experience insights council that we're um, putting together and that is a council where we have representation from each of the administrations um, and staff office around it to be able to determine what are the key insights from the customer perspective and then how to use those insights to then drive decision making and to, to drive the program the programming that's needed to to address it so that is that I would say at the you know uh, the CX at the um, you know, at the strategic, very strategic level, that's happening there. We're also having um, very, on the healthcare side. We have um, the, there's a patient experience council where those insights are feeding into it. So for them to decide on how to, um, you know, w which type of initiatives should they focus on as well. We've also been able to do is integrate those insights. So as we think about this insight, this channel, where should this channel, where should be the, all the areas that this channel should feed into driving decision making, better decision making from the customer's perspective. So we have this massive, the VA has this massive innovation research apparatus, massive, which is saving, not only helping, of course, veterans, but saving our, it's, it's, it's informing how to improve healthcare for um, our nation and the world. Um, and so mm. billions of dollars, right? And do, but how do we then make sure instead of like, you know, again, a lot of good things are happening at the local level, but can there be an opportunity where, you know, if we know opioid, right? Opioid is a massive issue, right? We, we have suicides and suicide epidemics that we're dealing with. Yeah. How do we then, you know, through some of those insights, how do we help drive our, our decision making and our innovation research portfolio? So those are some of the examples where the power of taking those insights and really putting it in this governance structure, um, you're able to really help drive decision making and drive and, and also drive, like I said, budgeting and how we, how we, yeah, um, yeah. And, and you'll find that we're actually could be saving money because we're in a way or avo avoiding costs because we're targeting um, the, the budget to where it really matters. Yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. I, 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 we don't have time for it not right now, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about how it would happen before you had this measurement, because I'm sure it was very, very different. How about Amira? Just quickly for you, what are you what are you seeing about um, you know with, with, in agencies that have somewhat of, uh, of an apparatus built for for measurement? What are you seeing in terms of how they're able to make decisions? Is it something that's you know remarkable to them, or is it something that you know that uh, is not showing big big things yet? I think to be honest, it's, um, you know, there's still not a ton of agencies that have the data to be able to make those big decisions, um, but but most are kind of just starting out or have been doing customer experience surveys sort of ad hoc, and so what we're recommending to them is that it doesn't have to be this overwhelming start, and as Lee was saying earlier, you don't want CX to just be, it won't be successful if it's just the special people, so off to the side. So, you know, as much as you, we're, we're starting out by saying, like, even before you get your survey going, look at your operational data and your administrative data. The federal government has so much rich administrative data that's not being used that can tell you a lot about your customer experience. Experience. And that also ties into other initiatives that are useful to attach to, like the federal data strategy and the evidence, um, evidence building, the new evidence building, uh, evidence-based policy making act. <laughs> it's a long title. Um, and then, you know, once you've kind of mapped out your operational data, you know, focus on one service. It doesn't have to be the whole journey or lifetime of someone, but just the journey of one service, and then find a single touch point to instrument um, and, and begin your measurement. And that is enough, and that's helpful and fine for the first first year or two. That's super, super advice. Okay, we're going to go to some questions now. I, I see there's a question for, for Lee there. Uh, how has the veteran feedback been leveraged 
to improve the lives of veterans, caregivers, and, and families, people that you talked about when you when we first started? Absolutely. That's a great, great question. Um, it's been so powerful and moving um, for me personally, and I know for the team, uh, because I don't think we knew what to expect. I mean, I think we knew it was going to be powerful, but um, we didn't know what to really fully expect when we start asking the questions and asking the questions that in the moments that matter to those veterans, families, caregivers, survivors. And I mean, it, it's so powerful in the sense that I know that um, initially I'll never forget this. I got the first, I got a call from the team that said, you're never going to believe it. We asked the veteran about their uh, pharmacy experience and then the veteran uh, mentioned that they were wanted to kill themselves. Uh. Um, and so, I mean, we went to, you know, uh, the team went to superhero mode and, and got the crisis line involved and literally saved that saved that veteran's life. I mean, it's amazing, like, you're asking those questions and you're asking the questions that matter and you're not asking the questions from what you think you, you want to ask, but you're asking it in the moments that matter and you're able to then get um, such real feedback um, to, from life-saving feedback, or it can be safety issues. Oh, well, there is a, we, we saw a, um, a syringe in the hallway, uh, or, you know, quality aspects, where we can then immediately, and we have over 150,000 instances where, in a short period of time, where we've been able to then address, in real time, address that and improve that experience, and then use that, that data for trending to be able to see, you know, is there, is, do we have an issue where it's, a, it's a, something that we could do um, uh, you know, some lean and, and be able to improve the process overall. So, I mean, that power, that feedback power has been just truly remarkable um, and, and it's something that, again, we, we did, not, did not expect. As a result, we have been able to use this information to really improve the overall service recovery um, process, and that's something that's happening right now at VA, um, which where we're able to really rethink how we're addressing complaints not only at the patient advocacy level, but within the service chiefs being able to actually um, instrument these changes, you know, as quickly as possible. So, I mean, it's been just so powerful. I can't, I mean, I'm, I'm sure as the other agencies, um, they will find it when you're asking those questions right, when you, you tell, ask veterans or ask your ask citizens, hey, um, provide your comments in a, in, a, in a comment box. You would be surprised what they will, uh, what they will provide you, and that will be incredible intel, which I would say is it will move us from being a reactionary government to more a proactive oh, government. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's great. Well, I see we're coming up against time, so um, we're going to wrap things up. I want to thank our panelists. It's been a fabulous, uh, fabulous discussion, and of course, our audience for for joining us. Um, uh, just want a reminder about the upcoming June 30th milestone. Your agency needs to complete its CX program maturity self-assessment and plan. Uh, there's a template provided on performance. Uh, dot gov page that you can use, and don't forget to register for our annual CX Summit to be held on the morning of June 25th. And note, we're going to send follow-up materials, including the infographic we covered earlier, and as well, uh, I don't know if we mentioned we're recording this webinar, so um, you'll be able to access it later if you want to play it for some people in your agency. I think it's been a fabulous discussion here, and I want to thank, thank everyone again. And um, Best wishes for the uh, rest of your day. We've enjoyed bringing you this webinar and uh, wish you all the best in executing OMB's 811 guidance. And don't forget, if you want to join act IAC's community of interest so you can help keep on top of all things government, we'd love to have you as a member. So bye for now. Thank you.